Hey guys, welcome to my G2 vs Fnatic VOD review. I mean, G2 Fnatic, two of the best teams in Europe duking it out. Everyone's been super fucking excited for this match. I did get spoiled on Twitter and apparently G2 loses to Fnatic, so I'm even more curious now. The spoiling didn't ruin the game for me, it just made me more curious on how Fnatic was able to beat G2. So without further ado, let's get this started. Aatroxman, pretty standard from blue side. I wouldn't say it's the weirdest. Usually the blue side ends up banning stuff like Irelia more often, but Aatrox is still fine as a ban. Whoa, whoa, these bans are actually going down pretty quickly, so let's talk about them. Aatroxman, we just talked about. Sona ban, I mean, Sona right now, you don't ban Sona just for Sona Taric. You ban Sona for pretty much everything. Oh, actually, this is a targeted ban now that I think about it. I looked at Aatrox and then Recon. Aatrox is a target ban towards Boipo because last split, Boipo would just play Aatrox and he would just split push all day long regardless of if the jungle's there to kill him or not. And Recon also a uh, sniper ban towards Hillisong. Hillisong is one of the best Recons in Europe along with Mickey X. So these are both sniper bans towards Fnatic players. Um, Sona, so nowadays it's not just about Sona Taric, there's like Sona Tom Kench, Sona Pike. Sona pretty much everything, like you can even play Sona Gallius, you can play Sona Shen. You can play pretty much any kind of Sona combinations and Sona's just really good as a champion. She scales really nicely, she's a team fighting monster, so that's why the Sona man comes out. And Sejuani, first pick Sejuani, followed up with stuff like Camille, Irelia, really dangerous, so sometimes you see purple side teams banning it. So these are both um, just sniper bans from G2 and Fnatic banning out good champions. Alright, let's see what G2 bans last. Yumi up. Okay, Cyber ban. Cyber ban um, usually means you want to play Ezreal or you just have a really good Cyber on the other team. And I think for both G2 and Fnatic, it's, they have. Their, G2 is just banning out good champions on the enemy team. Wow, first pick Yumi. I'm surprised Yumi got opened up. Yumi becomes also really strong when Sona is banned, because Sona is one of the best picks into Yumi, because Sona allows you to sustain the Yumi poke. With Sona gone, this Yumi first pick feels so fucking powerful. Which side is purple? I mean, obviously Fnatic is purple, because they're picking and banning second. Yumi without Sona is one of the strongest champions in the game. Karma. Karma, also the other really strong champion in the meta right now can be played solo lane, can be played support. Her buffs just made her like a utility god. For Pike, I'm not too sure where Pike is gonna go. Pike has to be support because like the Pike AD with Pike support is usually, or with a different support, it's like Pike Sona. Pike can also go solo lane. Like this Pike is actually really fucking flexible and we're not gonna know where any of these Fnatic picks go until later. So Karma can go top, mid, support and same thing for pike actually pike can also go top mid and support probably not so much mid we can take off way mid from pike but it can go top or support oh shit my cam is blocking it i didn't even realize it so sona can go top mid or support pike can go top or support. Those are the two places Pike can go. So these are both flex picks and they can go either way. Alright. So as I said, whenever you ban Sivir, you're likely to pick Ezreal and that's what G2 is doing. Ban Sivir, pick Ezreal, especially with them having Yumi. And Akali early. A lot of teams are still very much enjoying Akali. Wow, this is a very mobile draft already from G2. Wow, Fnatic just insta-locking TF2 reply okay so one thing that tf has been really good for right now is there aren't that many like really good assassin champions in the meta akali somewhat yes but akali can have a hard time killing tf like when there's champions like fizz in the meta when there's more champions like that that can actually instigate the tf it's a lot more scaring play in tf under dodes condition but in like Pretty like normal conditions, TF is such a good blind right now because it's hard to get punished. They're banning Shen on top, they don't want to enable any kind of like 
even harsher foot pusher with TF. Oh my god, these EU drafts are really hard to follow because I don't know where Thona Pike is gonna go, so it leaves a lot of things in the air. Looks like they're just banning out junglers. They're probably gonna pick jungler on their fourth because they banned out two jungle. What jungle are they gonna take? I'd imagine Olaf, Jarbon gone, Rek'Sai gone. Olaf, one of the stronger early game jungles left. What's the last ban G2? Leaf then. Has to be Olaf. That's like the only jungler that's left for. Olaf, Skarner, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Gragas, Olaf, Skarner, Gragas. There we go, there's a Gragas pick. Okay, Gragas jungle, TF mid, Karma, Pike still can go support or top lane. So they'll probably take like an 80 carry champion here. Let's see how G2 replays. There aren't that many jungles left. Has to be Olaf for Skarner. Wow, you really have made it this far. And then... I look at this G2 comp, one thing I worry for them is this comp has such low CC. Whenever you have low amount of CC, it makes the execution level of your comp much higher and your comp isn't able to punish enemy mistakes as much. Yeah, there's the Olaf. So that's one thing that G2 has to worry about, but G2 is an incredibly skilled mechanical team, so they can get through a lot of times playing these hard execution comps. Callista, Draven, what, Oriana? Hmm. Whoa, Renekton, okay. So it's gonna be Pike and Karma bot lane and Renekton TF top. Or Renekton and TF solo lane. Wow, that's interesting. That's something I didn't expect. So, this comp is going to be a lot about the Renekton. So, things that are going really well for Renekton right now. Renekton plus Gragas is good AP AD damage split. So, it's hard for the solo lane to just itemize armor or just itemize MR. Also, TF global ult is really nice to pressure the Renek lane and get the dives going. Renek is a really good pick into Relia in terms of being a counter pick, but you also have to snowball the pick or Renek the pick kind of falls off. So you have to be really playing towards the Renek then. All right, now let's skip over to the game and we'll talk about win condition for both team, fight, team comps a bit. All right. Ooh, interesting level one setup from both teams. It looks like G2 is warding their red and waiting in the tri brush. And Fnatic is waiting here. So both teams are defending in base. Both teams feel like the other one will invade and they're waiting to defend. All right, so let's actually talk about um, kind of the win conditions for both comps. So a lot of G2's win condition is early game skirmishing and 1-3-1 and global plays. You can see three teleports. Three teleports on G2. So this comp has, let's say, low CC. It has very low CC. Lots of strong skirmishers. Strong early game. Strong early because you have Olaf. Low CC, lots of strong skirmish, strong early globals with TPs. Three TP. So it's gonna we can expect a lot of heavy early game fighting from G2, and the game is gonna be very, very chaotic from G2 then. Their win condition is get their solo laners like Akali and Irelia ahead and go into 131. Ezreal is a god tier champion whenever he's on the one defending mid lane and Irelia, Akali, I mean what to, what to say about them, they are incredibly strong side lane players, so it's going to be a 1-3-1 comp from G2. 
if you go to fanatic draft what do they have i if this one's really simple get renek ahead that's their biggest win condition get renekton ahead the Gragas is going to play for the Renekton, TF is going to play for the Renekton, and anytime you have like a Karma Pike lane, what's Karma Pike going to do? I can already theorize this very easily. Karma is going to be wave clear. She's going to wave clear well by herself. Pike is going to roam. So their goal, the Pike even, is going to get the Renekton ahead while Karma maintains bot lane. So what we're going to see is a lot of fights around top lane for um, Fnatic and how G2 is going to be able to play out their early game and keep the fights elsewhere. Also, like G2 pressuring mid lane is really nice because TF can't ult other places if you're constantly pressuring TF. So a lot of different win condition from both of these teams, but let's see how yeah the game actually plays out. Yep, G2 just waiting for the invade there. Pike has Relic, so I don't know who's supposed to last hit. When both champions have Relic and Frostfang, the Relic champion is supposed to last hit everything. This Yumi's just baiting. The only reason Yumi's staying out there by herself is to bait. If I see a Yumi out by herself in early game, I'm like, that's a bait. Do not take that bait. Let's see, Yanko, where are you going? Checking brushes with his axe. Looks like he's gonna start no leash. Starting no leash blue. You can see Gragas start bot side. Oh, oopsies, what I do? Oops, I skipped forward a little too much. You can start, you can see Gragas starting bot side because he wants to jungle top and pressure top side early. He wants to be jungling like this and pressuring top side. That's why Greg is starting on blue side. Let's see what he does. Blue. Blue into straight red. Blue into red into double. So if you do blue, red, Double golem, that'll give you level three. So maybe that's what Brox is doing. Whoa. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. Remember what I talked about? How Irelia matchup into Renekton is really dangerous for Irelia. So why it's really dangerous? Because as Irelia, you want to be really mobile. Like, that's one of your strengths early game. Like, you're really mobile. But Renekton, whenever he point and click CCs you, a lot of Irelia strength dies out. So Irelia is not the greatest versus Renekton and she doesn't have a range clear, range wave clear tool or a range last hitting tool other than her E. It's kind of really shitty to keep last hitting with your E. So one thing that um, G2 did is they lane swap caps to top lane. But for some reason caps stayed in middle of the wave when with both hitting level two and now he's getting extremely chunked. Oh caps, what are you doing? What the fuck? This was such a simple, like... How? One minion off of level 2, gets the level 2, auto, auto W, auto moving forward, auto, auto Q... What? What the fuck, Caps? How do you not know this matchup? What? Holy shit. Wow. I'm shocked that Caps got killed like that. Don't fucking tell me that, what is it, this is Blippa out playing, because that's just Caps like playing hot garbage. That was fucking. Caps playing hot garbage. Oh my god, this dive feels really bad. Caps already used TP. If he dies here, he used TP and flash. If he dies here... 
Oh my fucking god. Okay, they, they still got the kill. It's He's gonna miss so much. This is terrible for Caps. Blippo dying is kinda troll, but Caps dying is so much fucking worse. Cause he's gonna be missing so much and they're gonna be able to snowball top side over and over again. Whenever TF is 6, the first play they're gonna look for is just diving the Akali again. You can't see Akali through her shroud with TF. Like, you can't target the Akali, but you'll know where she is. The whole reason of Gragas staying right there was to make sure TF can push out. He had a wave kind of built. And yeah, all the CSing is done by the Pike, not the Karma, and Pike roaming a lot. At least Fnatic's game plan was pretty easy. Oh my god, this dive. Oh, nice, he tried to get the flash. Oh, man, dives like this feel so fucking bad to play against. Damn, what the fuck? Fnatic's out g 2 G2. All this early game skirmish and all these roams. This feels like very much a G2 play. Oh my god, Bwipo, what the fuck? You guys killed him twice. No, don't tell me, no. Bwipo, no. Bwipo, no. Oh my fucking god. If you died there after fucking getting a dope. <laughs> oh, Zankos. Holy shit, Bwipo. What the fuck? He flashed over the wall to try to hit that axe. Dude, I cannot believe Bwipo's throwing his lead like that, though. Broxa set up Bwipo so well for early game, and Bwipo's just fucking throwing it on the ground. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. Look at this. He's hopping over the wall right here. Look at their vision right now. Their vision is like this and then their vision is going to be like this brox is ganking he brox is doing a pat thing where caps cannot tell where he is and caps feel so safe because they have so much wars brox is pathing is just dodging the wars completely holy fucking shit so well played from broxa God fucking damn, Broxa. You are a fucking smurf. You are a fucking smurf, Broxa. Holy fucking shit, Broxa smurfed that gank. He absolutely fucking smurfed that gank. Man, he put Caps in a position where he felt so safe. And also, the shitty thing about this Ezreal Yumi lane is like you're supposed to poke the Karma Pike, but there is no poking when all they're doing is pushing and roaming. They're pushing and roaming and then pushing and roaming. Oh, when they're not able to get the return kill. God. Let's see how it's starting. Starting with Wonder all laning at level 6. Also, really awkward thing is Wonder doesn't have. Wonder doesn't have mana when he's all in here, so he can't queue back to the minions either or fight. And then now he potted up, he can try to fight now. Nemesis barely lives. Damn, Brock's up being right there when Wonder's hitting level 6 and going for the all in. He's fucking smurfing this game. Wow, he's setting up his solo laner so well. In Fnatic bot lane, they know their only goal is to affect rest of the map. So they feel like completely fine just chilling and making sure rest of the map can play it out. That's their only goal right now to make sure rest of the map can play out the game, make sure the pike can roam, 
Karma is a pick that's very resilient in a 1v2. She's like an Ezreal that can AoE. She's like an AoE Ezreal. Yanko's going in for the kill. Blipple Q? Oh my goodness. Wow, Blipple actually played that well too. Q? Wow. Holy fucking shit. Fnatic is fucking smurfing. Oh, the really shitty thing is Caps is in level 6 here. Yankos is level 6, but Caps isn't. Brox. How the fuck is Brox are there for every gank? Wait, how the fuck was he here? He skipped every camp to be topside. What was your fucking pad thing? He's walking towards the red. He's walking towards the red. He's on the red. He's not doing the red. He's walking top side. He knows this gank is coming. Holy fucking shit. They're communicating beforehand. He skipped all his camps. He skipped the red, the race, the double golem. Holy fucking shit. He knew that gank is coming so well. Holy fuck. Oh my god. He skipped every camp because he knew this gank was coming. What a god. What a fucking god. What an absolute fucking monster. Oh. Oh my god. Oh yeah, we're not going to double speed this bot at all. Oops. Wonder has to go top to catch the farm. Now they lose mid side farm. Damn, Brox was reading G2 like a book. Brox was entirely responsible for every single good thing that happened in the early game. <laughs> Nemesis. Q float. What the fuck is he doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you walking back in? He's like, okay, I see the Akali. I see the Akali. She's level 5. I'm going to walk back in. Nope, I'm level 6. I got my blue card. I got my blue card. Okay, let's just ignore that. Let's just fucking move on. <laughs> just, I don't know why. It's just an, it's an Akali. As a non-mobile champion, whenever you see an Akali, you just have to fuck off. You just have to fuck off. That's Akali's just that champion. Whenever she has her ult up, you just you just have to be like, okay, peace. Wow, G2 is actually not being able to utilize a Yumi lane. Like, Yumi, it's actually so hard to poke versus the Pike and Karma now that I think about it. Because even if you poke the Pike, he just regens everything. And Karma has her shield, so she can walk out of Yumi Q pretty easily. Or just take the damage with her shield. Okay, look at, this looks just so funny. Look at what he's doing here. Look at this distance. He's like closing the distance. He's not even kiting. Like look at the distance that he allows to happen. What is he doing? What are you doing? Yeah, damn. I never thought about it like this, but Karma Pike counters Yumi. Oh wow, Brox is not here. This is the first time that a gank has happened where Brox is not here. Oh, get it, get it Nemesis. Flash if you need to. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. 
These so oh, if I'm Broxa, holy fucking shit. If I'm Broxa, I'm like I'm on the bottom side of the map. Top side, play careful. Top side, play careful. Look, he's fucking putting down the danger ping right there. Whippo! Your jungler is literally putting down the danger ping right there. He's gonna be on the top side of the map. I'm farming bot side. Play careful. Just fucking back off. Stop playing for plating when your jungler's on the bot side of the map. Look at Akali E following TF. Oh, dude, look at Akali on the minimap. Look at Akali on the minimap. Whee! <laughs> the Akali is like, Whee! <laughs> Oh my god, that was just so fucking bad though. I can't even imagine what it feels like to be Broxa. You fucking danger ping, you're on the bot side of the jungle taking dragon, and your solo lane who you got in the head, both are like inting there. God. Oh my god, I'm furious if I'm the Gragas. I'm fucking carrying everything, I'm fucking doing my pings, I'm taking dragon, and these idiots won't listen. I'd be fucking pissed if I was Broxa. It's important Broxa doesn't farm anymore. Broxa needs to stay consistently fighting. If Broxa farms, G2 will catch up. Broxa has to abuse his Ford Zero lead. He has his two items complete right now, Sword Pen Boots and the Blue Smite with... Oh, that was blind. That E was blind. Yee! <laughs> Damn, that's so fucking funny. I knew Akali could do that technically, but I've never seen it before in a pro game. I knew she could do it technically because I remember Riot talking about it when they reworked Akali. This is what the reworked Akali is going to be able to do, but I've never seen it in a pro game. So one thing that G2 did that I think is really smart is they swapped over Ezreal Yumi to mid lane. So Ezreal Yumi can actually abuse their poke now. Because beforehand, Ezreal Yumi wasn't able to abuse their poke. Because when you're versus the Karma Pike, you're not able to poke out anyone. But by moving the Ezreal Yumi mid lane, they figured out, oh, we can activate Ezreal Yumi this way. Why did Wonder stop that? Stop the TP. So Wonder's about to TP. Or Bipo's about to TP. Wonder cancels the TP. Oh, yeah. Damn, if he didn't cancel the TP, he actually lives here. He dies because he canceled the TP. Wow, holy fuck. Did you guys see this? Did you guys see this? Look at the distance here. Auto. Wow, he flashed that E. What the fuck? This is unreal reflexes. That was unreal reflex to be able to flash that E. Doesn't matter though. It's a fucking Renekton and Greg is still gonna dive you. Oops. I forgot to be at one speed. That was unreal reaction, but don't matter. Broxa led with W auto first also, instead of just going for E first. Damn, Fnatic did exactly what their comp needed to do, snowball topside. Broxa's a fucking god. Caps dying level 1 was troll as fuck, but it wasn't, like, Caps dying level 1 opened the game up for Broxa, but it wasn't easy for Broxa to do what he did, but he was able to do it. It wasn't easy at all, but he was able to do it. Dodge, oh, right in the heart. Did you see that mini game going down right here? Both are trying to dodge. Caps gets this downward. Hillisant shoots down. Ding 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 ding. He got the flash predict before. Really? I didn't see. Oh! 
Nice. Holy shit. This guy's a smurf. Damn, so he, he hit one predicting the flash and then he hit the second one as a pure, like, pure guess. Get in, losers, get in! Oh no! What the fuck? Get the fuck out, Hilly! Just get out! Okay, he has E, that's why he played really confident there. He felt like he could always lead because he has E. Holy shit, EU pikes. Then whenever I see a pike, I'm like, damn, this champion's garbage. And then I see EU players play him, and I'm like, okay, never mind. Mid turret, the most important turret in the game. Mid tier one, able to get it with the Rift Herald after they are doing their snowball. Feels good, man. Trinity TF, pretty normal. Also, the Gragas is full AP, so Trinity TF isn't even that bad. Wait, how did Wonder die? Wait, what? What the fuck? What did Wonder do? Holy shit, he's walking into the entire team for the scuttle. You didn't even get it, the pike got it. Oh my goodness, what are you doing? Jesus Christ, Wonder. The only way you can recover from that situation is if you type worse in chat. Whoop, Hillsong with the counter int. Player gold the entire game. Of course, Bip was killing it. But a lot of Bip was gold is just coming from Brox so ganking the fuck out for him. Taking turret, taking all those plating. God, it feels so bad as Ezreal when the rest of your team's falling behind. Cause it's just really hard to do anything. Damn, Hilly Pike doesn't miss a hook. Dominate jungle is a useless role. <laughs> and this game, it's really different because both players are playing like very proactive early game junglers and Gragas and Olaf. In NA, we play stuff like Seju, Jarvan, Skarner. <laughs> if you play Gragas, Olaf, jungle's a useful role. Wow, Fnatic's just running train, taking outer turrets. They know they need to play towards side lanes. Now they're matching the Ezreal Yumi with the Pike Karma again. The Pike Karma into Yumi is so interesting and so good. I've never seen it before. People picking Pike Karma into Yumi, but it counters the Yumi poke completely. Yumi is so fucking bullshit for this reason. In lane, her poke is uncounterable. Her poke has no counters in lane. I mean, you can play stuff like Sona into it, but Sona is a high priority champion. But Karma is also a high priority champion. Pike really isn't. So this like Karma Pike lane is actually so legitimate as a counter. Oh, Reckless. Played a little too up there. Wait, we saw Wonder get top turret. We know Wonder should be coming down. I'm surprised like Reckless didn't see this play coming. Like you know Wonder's coming down. Why are you playing so up? You know Wonder's coming. Reckless trying to go in for RQ there. Ugh, that was just so dumb on his part. Ooh my god. 
Holy fucking shit. Brossa, what is this? Who the fuck is this? Holy fuck. God damn. Someone stop this man. Why the fuck does this man have a sub? Who the fuck is gonna sub in for this guy? Who the fuck are you gonna put in? Dude, that Dandan -dan guy must be Jesus Reborn. For him to be a sub for Broxa. Bye caps. <laughs> Just insta deleted. God damn, look at this fucking Woof. Mickey X also jumped on the wrong target. He had to jump on perks, not wonder. Boom. Kobe. Brox is just consistently moving around the map and knows where he needs to be so well. Then jungles with this kind of awareness and this kind of map control. This is a masterclass by Broxa. That's the, that's such a classic Kelly. Play extremely well and then play and then int a few times. Kelly sounds very much like Caps where he has really high highs and really low lows. Oh, oh my god. Flash stun, let's get it. Damn. Fnatic actually played this so well and they're keeping up the tempo of things. They made sure they weren't just sitting there farming. Like after they get kills, they move around, they dive turrets. Really well done by Fnatic snowballing this game properly. Fnatic has a comp where if they don't snowball, their comp becomes like garbage. Like Renekton falls off really badly. Like TF can also fall off when people get QSS. You don't really have an AD carry, you have a Karma Pike. You have to make sure you constantly fight. Hillisan starts off by being troll. Gets you muted. Mickey X on caps. Why did you detach here? What? Mickey trolled here. He detached here. <laughs> got stunned while trying to reattach and then got insta -gibbed. Holy shit. Why did he de-attach? That was actually so fucking troll. Boing! Gold card. Trinity. Let's do damage. The bullshit thing about the Trinity TF is you're supposed to be weak when you're in a side lane, but Trinity TF, like Trinity um, plus what's the other item they get? Rapid Fire TF is actually so godly in a side lane. You can beat most champions as long as you're not too far behind as um, split push TF. Damn, this game's just broken apart. This game is just broken apart. Oh my god. Wow, Fnatic 
once they have the pedal to the metal, they don't fucking stop. I'm shocked if feet teams play this well with comps like this. It's not easy. Damn, maybe we should be scared of Fnatic at Rift Rivals. Because NA teams, when you play this kind of style, NA teams, like, they'll get their heads, faces smashed in. We don't play at this speed in NA, so this is something very foreign. It's like something that's very foreign to NA teams, like this kind of snowball, this kind of early game, this kind of junglers. Damn. Alright, let's see how fast you end with Baron Fanatic. So people were saying this was like a fiesta of a game. This is actually a decent quality game. There were some fiesta moments from certain players overall, but this game was still about Fnatic recognizing where they have tempo, recognizing where they have leads and actually pressing it forward. It was enabled by G2 players making mistakes, but this wasn't just a like a oh G2 trolled and lost this game. This is a Fnatic played extremely well. Think it's a Fiesta game with Brock the Heart smurfing? No. There are a lot of teamwork that went into it, and Hillisan played it well too. There are definitely int moments. This was not a perfect game by any means, but it was still an extremely well played game. Like playing at this speed naturally makes for way more mistakes, and naturally makes the game way more chaotic. So for a game that was played at this speed, I don't even think it was like a very mistake filled game. One thing that I don't change my mind on is like people overrating the fuck out of Nemesis. I think Nemesis is good, but there is still a gap between like Caps Nuke Duck and then Nemesis. Don't forget the support Reckless did his job too. Yowza. Damn, these fucking Gragas barrels, holy fuck. These homing barrels never miss. Wow, this must have been so entertaining to watch as like a fanatic fan. Cap fence, you get to snowball. Game is fast. There isn't like dumps. There is some dumb shit going on, but the game is actually really fast. Wow, I'm super curious to see what analysts say, but they better credit the fuck out of Broxa here. Whoa, end the game! End the game! I'm pretty sure three of them could have ended. It's a TF. G2 definitely goes for the end there. Oh, nice try. Pretty sure if they played for the end, that game was done though. Play to end. Bwipo. <laughs> Bwipo, buddy. Now play to end. What the fuck did Brock and Reckless do? They should just play to end. I'm pretty sure they could have ended that. Double stopwatch. Stopwatch into Zanyas.
Whipple had a stopwatch and wanted to bait a fight. I guess it wasn't happening. Reckless with the full support karma build. Oh, 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 TF back door. Oh, Renekton in front door. Gragas front door. Wow, what a actually such a fucking entertaining game. I loved how Fnatic played early game. I love Broxa's pathing. I loved how Broxa prioritized getting his solo lanes ahead. I loved how Fnatic picked Karma, Pike, into Yumi to counter it. I just love so much things about this game. So much intelligent, like, draft moves. So much intelligent in-game moves. Like, really great pathing from Broxa. There were so many good things about this game.